Hi, welcome to Sharp Talk. I'm Aki Fujimura, CEO of B2S, the company management sponsor of the eBeam Initiative. Today, we're really pleased to have Vivek Singh with us. Hey, Vivek, uh, nice to see you. While the rest of us were sitting still trying to decide what to do with COVID, and you made a big change in your career, and you used to be the head of computational lithography which includes OPC and IoT and, and other things uh, at Intel. But then uh, you took early retirement and then you went to NVIDIA and now you're um, uh, doing OPC IoT and helping everybody to uh, do that on GPUs. Is that uh, what you're working on? Hi Aki, uh, it's great to be with you as always. Uh, yes, it was a rather happy coincidence for me that uh, right around the time when I was looking for my second act after spending a wonderful 27 years at Intel, it turned out that NVIDIA was getting involved in computational lithography. In fact, I was uh, more than a little surprised that uh, Jensen Huang himself was personally involved. Uh, later, I realized that I shouldn't have been that surprised. He's involved in a very many things at NVIDIA. I, I'm convinced the man has more than 24 hours in his day. But in any case, um, Jensen believes that the computational lithography problem is only going to get bigger. And he wants to apply NVIDIA's tremendous uh, hardware and software uh, expertise to um, advance semiconductor scaling, not just for NVIDIA, but um, for the world at large. Now, Aki, you know better than, uh, better than many people uh, how the computational lithography problem is just crying out for parallelization. And, and that today's GPUs are the perfect platform to do that. So what my team and I are trying to do, uh, Aki, are, is to develop some underlying low level libraries that are going to make it easier for computational lithography developers to utilize the awesome power of the GPU. And if we can do that, then not only will we cut down the OPC time drastically, I think we will open up the compute envelope that is required to solve the kind of problems with the kind of accuracy that scaling is going to require in the coming decade. Mm -hmm. well, that's really great. Um, I think Jensen was right. And, um, so, but uh, before that, um, when you were at Intel, uh, I know that your team was uh, actually very famous for uh, publishing a bunch of very important papers about pixelated masks. Now, um, are pixelated masks uh, related to a COVID linear mask? May maybe a precursor or something? Uh, how are they related? And what, what, what's your thinking about curved linear masks, which is like the kind of the talk in the talk of the town right now? Yeah, yeah. Aki, you're, you're right to think of the pixelated masks of 15 years ago as kind of a precursor uh, uh, to today's uh, inverse lithography mass or, or curvilinear mass more specifically. Um, I gave a presentation at Barkus in 2016, where I talked about this difficulty of going from mathematical masks to uh, manufacturable masks. And I discussed um, the work that is required to do that uh, and the compromises it requires. But if we can derive and design these masks more easily, and if we can make them uh, sufficiently well, then you don't have to make those compromises. Yeah, 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 interesting. So, so it is kind of a precursor. What, um, what do you think about curved linear masks coming up? Do you think it's gonna be uh, widely used for uh, all the layers in the leading edge? Or do you think it's gonna be only for hotspots maybe? Or like, what, what do you think is gonna happen? You know, Aki, that's where I'm really excited about the work uh, my team is doing. Uh, if you take a survey of all the ILT papers uh, that are presented, say, at uh, SPIE, for example, um, then uh, you'll conclude rightly uh, that uh, ILT is thought to be too slow, and therefore uh, its application is limited only to a few critical layers, if that, and more typically to fixing hotspots within those layers. But if we can speed up ILT and OPC by an order of magnitude, then the line between them will blur, no pun intended. Uh, and, and if we can do that, 
then uh, you will see that the application of ILT is not limited anymore by time constraints or computational budget constraints. But I, but I do believe, I do truly believe that to do that well, um, you will have to reimagine the underlying uh, algorithms and architecture uh, as opposed to simply porting over an, an existing code base to the GPU. Um, but if you can do that, and NVIDIA certainly has the CUDA experts to do that, um, then um, I think you will see a proliferation of these curvilinear masks. And in any case, uh, that is the more natural solution to the physics problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, uh, what about for EUV? And I think the industry is kind of divided in its opinion about curvilinear masks for EUV because one, part of the, the world says, um, well, UV is a much more precise instrument. So uh, why do you need curvilinear IoT? And then uh, the other half seems to be saying uh, 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 curvilinear masks helps help, uh, help with uh, 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 process windows and and it doesn't matter how good the UV is, it can always use uh, help with process windows. I, I don't know wh which camp are you in. Yeah, I tend to fall in the latter camp. Uh... Aki, and I think uh, uh, be, that's because I think of uh, ILT as providing some extra degrees of freedom that can eke out more resolution from any optical system. That system could be 193. That system could also be EUV. You know, EUV has been a long time coming. Uh, in the early 90s, when I started working in this area, EUV was thought of as that precise instrument you mentioned uh, uh, as being able to stand alone on the raw power of its small wavelength. Um, but a lot of scaling has happened in the subsequent three decades. And so things are very small now. So even EUV needs all the help it can get from resolution enhancement techniques. And ILT is just another uh, one, of these, uh, one of these techniques. So, if, uh, in the, by the way, in the same 2016 Barker's paper, I talked about uh, um, the, I, I demonstrated the benefits of applying um, ILT to EUV. And so if the masks can be made, uh, if uh, the GPUs can be utilized, and hopefully we can provide these helpful libraries, then I think ILT will come to EUV. That's great, yeah. The, the, the EUV, uh, is more precise. So computationally, it requires a smaller grid, so it would take longer too. Um, so the, the uh, GPUs are going to help us that, do you think? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Uh, you know, EUV has a, a few oddities of its own, uh, and certainly the mass making can be a bit more challenging because of the uh, reflective nature of those systems. But um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, uh, scaling is driven by uh, scaling is an economic imperative, and, and I, I personally believe that uh, uh, yes, uh, by doing it fast, by taking into account uh, all of these oddities, uh, by opening up the compute budget, I think I think uh, EUV is going to require it. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And so now uh, GPUs are, are also great at uh, deep learning, uh, especially for uh, training. Uh, deep learning systems. And um, uh, what do you think of deep learning for computational lithography and broadly uh, for anything in semiconductor manufacturing? Yeah, I I personally think there's a lot of untapped potential for applying AI uh, to scientific computing, and uh, it turns out for me uh, that Nvidia is a great place to keep abreast of the latest scientific developments in this area. For example, uh, physics-informed neural networks, uh, PINN. Um, I have only modest experience in applying AI to uh, semiconductor problems, both manufacturing and design. I, was, I spent the last seven years or so uh, trying to do that. Uh, but what I found is that you have to apply AI judiciously, uh, as opposed to ramming it in on every aspect of every problem, which, which you could get away by doing uh, because AI is so powerful. Um, uh, but, but anyway, I, uh, ILT and OPC are no different. Uh, I think there are uh, several opportunities for applying AI to parts of the ILT flow. Uh, for example, uh, in using pattern recognition uh, to reduce the amount of compute overall or to improve uh, model accuracy. Both of these uh, ideas have uh, been addressed by several publications recently. Um, uh, but again, I think uh, the trick is 
taking an AI idea from the research phase where a paper is published and it's proven on say a thousand polygons to uh, all the way to the high volume manufacturing code phase where uh, it must work unfailingly on trillions of polygons. Um, and um, an AI idea is good, a deep learning idea is good if it can successfully complete that entire journey. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm looking forward to how the world is gonna change with GPUs and uh, deep learning and everything. Well, th thank you, Vivek. Um, uh, you're not only an expert in OPC and IoT, but uh, you also make it so easy for people that are not experts in software to understand. So really appreciate. Thank you very much, Vivek. Uh, thank you, Aki. The beauty of this field is that uh, uh, th there is no end to learning. I am continuing to learn, which is all a person I uh, can hope for. I, I look forward to seeing you uh, soon, uh, hopefully this year. Aki, take care. Yeah, thank you.